Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. In this video, I wanna talk about five things you should do when you're learning to code to allow you to host some of your projects, try things out. So, I was talking to Dian, one of the guys that follows me on YouTube. Thank you for all your support. And we had a great conversation about what some of the bare minimum things you should set up right from the get go, especially if you're looking to learn web development. And here's the five things that I did for myself and I think you should too. Number one, you should have a GitHub account. Why? Because you are able to commit your code and show your progress. And what I did initially, not so much now, but when I started coding, every time I did something, I would put it on GitHub and you would have a nice little track record that I could show how much time I spent coding because I had to commit almost every day. And this is a great way not only to show that you're involved in coding because you have a track record of your commits, but you could also show the progress you made from, let's say, some of your older projects to some of your newer projects. And that's really good. So if you don't have GitHub, you should definitely get GitHub. Number two, you should sign up for CodePen. CodePen is awesome. There's other sites like it. I really like CodePen because it allows you to test out quick ideas. What I also love about CodePen is because they showcase other projects other people made. And if you're looking to see the code behind what they did, you can, and that's a great tool for learning. And again, they have a free tier account. You don't have to pay any money for it. Now, although you could host some of your websites on GitHub, when you start creating React projects and apps like that, GitHub is not the best place. So this is number three where I recommend Netlify. Netlify is super awesome. Not only can you host your static HTML and CSS projects, but you could also start to host your React projects and other projects like that. So Netlify is another place I recommend. Number four, I would recommend eventually setting up a WordPress site for yourself. I ha I used to have one. I just moved my hosting, so I have to restore my site from backup. But you should have a portfolio site, which for me was my name, you know, like .com. And it could be your name .com. So when someone searching your name, your website shows up. And if you don't have a portfolio, that's okay. You could wait until you start having some things to put in your portfolio, but have a website. That's your name. That's your professional website, like your business card. You could always send people to that and you could set that up with WordPress. So those are the bare minimum things that I recommend. I'm not sure if I said five things you should have, but that really was four. See, I I'm sure I come up with a fifth thing. So number one, make sure you have a GitHub account. Number two, make sure you have a CodePen account so you could try things out. Number three, make sure you guys have a Netlify account. And number four, really consider about setting up a personal website, which is kind of like your business card, kind of talks about what you're doing and you could eventually use to showcase your portfolio. The first three things you could do for absolutely free. With WordPress, it's free, except you need to buy a domain name and you have to have whole Hosting. There's a lot of different hosting available from nine bucks a month. It's not free though, you know what I mean? So there are other avenues, but if you're gonna have a personal website, I always recommend hosting it with WordPress. Now, why is this important for you to have all those things? Because right from the get-go, you have to start to have a history of the work that you're doing. Someone could be coding for three years, five years. If they don't have anything on GitHub, if they don't have a personal you know, WordPress site, if they don't have Netlify to showcase some the examples that they're doing then it's your word against my interpretation of what you're saying you could tell me oh i did this this that but if, if you have nothing to show for it i'm not really it, it's i'm not going to take you seriously right it's at least it's going to be very difficult so you need to have a history of the progress you make and the biggest mistake people make is that they wait they're like one day when i have more projects and portfolio one day when i know how to code start now don't wait it's better to have some history with which shows some mediocre work and then you could see the progress you're making over time to some better work than not having anything at all. In my opinion, if you have a different opinion in the comments, please let me know. But that's very important to have a history that you could show where it's not just your word, but it's a history that, you know, written in stone because it's online that people could see. If you go on my GitHub account, you will see when I opened it. And just by looking at it, you could tell, oh, he's been coding for that long. And what's interesting, somewhat like I did not erase it, I'll have to find it, but I have my first project that I made that I never finished. It looks like crap, it's terrible, but I still left it there to remind me this is where I started and this is the progress 
I made. So if you're starting out and if you don't have those accounts set up, I would recommend go set those up right now. Get your GitHub going, get your CodePen account going, get your Netlify account going, and eventually think about creating a personal a website that is your name.com. So whenever someone Googles your name, they're able to find you and that's one way you could share what you're doing. So that will become your portfolio website where you could showcase your portfolio and all your portfolio pieces you could host on Netlify. So with that being said, I hope you guys like this brief video that I made today. If you like what I talk about on this channel, consider subscribing. This channel is for everybody, but I mostly talk about people in a situation like me. I'm about to turn 40 years old. I started coding a while ago on and off. It doesn't matter, but the whole point is it's for people closer to their late 20s, early 30s, mid 30s, late 30s, whatever it is, looking to switch careers. Now, the reason why this might be beneficial to somebody else who is not in that position is because as as older folks, not that old, I'm just gonna say it right now, 40 is like the new 20. That's what I'm gonna keep saying to myself. But the point is, we don't have time to waste. So what the strategies we employ are cutting right to the point. I don't wanna waste time. I wanna make sure that I get job ready as quickly as possible. So if you're younger, sure, you could waste time and be okay with it, but you could also apply some of these strategies and get ahead. So with that being said, thank you for all your support. I really appreciate you guys. Keep up the good work and I'll see you guys later. And remember, you should always be coding or as I say, happy coding everyone. <laughs>